Hello, everybody, and happy Thursday. It looks like uh, we have a really exciting one ahead. Uh, a lot of requests for, for this Instagram live interview. And uh, luckily today, we're going to be uh, we're going to be joined today with uh, Darren Bradley, a local amazing architectural photographer here uh, located here in San Diego and connecting to him right now. And uh, I'm going to let him tell his story. Hello, Darren. Yeah, how are you doing? Good. How are you today? Good. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, this is, uh, this is really taken off and having people with such knowledge join like yourself is really kind of adding a, a great wave of interest to all this. So, you know, it's really thanks to you guys that this is becoming something. So thank you. Oh, that's awesome. So, Darren, you know, you have a really interesting story. And uh, I can't wait uh, for you to share a little bit of this. I think I'd really like to start out with uh, who, who is Darren Bradley, the man, the, the, the myth, the legend, the character, the character on Instagram? <laughs> I don't know. I think everybody sort of interprets that however they like. But um, I mean, I'm an architectural photographer, of course. But, you know, it's, it's really it's kind of started out as a hobby more than anything else. I'm just more of a frustrated architect. Um, so I come at it more as somebody who's interested in architecture than as somebody who's interested in photography. For me, photography is just the medium to express my love of architecture. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be doing something else that's related to architecture. I wouldn't really be doing some other sort of photography, I don't think. Um, but uh, I kind of always wanted to be an architect. And um, I was discouraged from doing so because I'm terrible at math. Uh, it, it was only later that I found out that most architects are terrible at math. So, um, you know, that's, there's some cruel irony there, I suppose. And then I also have a corporate job. Uh, and where I work with engineers and I do math all the time now. So go figure. It's another cruel irony, I suppose. Um, but uh, so, yeah, this started as a hobby and as kind of a way to reconnect with my love of architecture uh, while I was working as kind of a drone in the corporate world. And um, I uh, just started posting photos of buildings that I, uh, around town that I liked. And uh, they started getting published. And once they started getting published, the... Uh, I started getting commissions from architects to photograph their current work and uh, kind of one thing led to another, so. Amazing. So yeah. did, you, did you go to architecture school or did you go no. to engineering as a trade? No, neither actually. I have a history degree from the Sorbonne in Paris. Okay. Uh, so I went to, I did a little bit of high school in, I went to high school in, in San Diego and then I did a little bit as an exchange student uh, in France. Uh, and I went to BYU for a while and majored in skiing. Uh, <laughs> I did that for a little bit of my life as well. <laughs> yeah. And um, then decided that uh, I was working in hotels and working for my dad as a real estate agent for a while. And finally went back to school and I decided to go back to France. I got into the Sorbonne somehow. I uh, studied history. I got my degree in history. And then I ended up working uh, uh, in the aerospace just uh, kind of a pure fluke when I moved back to the States. And uh, I didn't even pick up a camera. I was, a, I was I'd taken photography in high school. So I, I knew the basics. I had a dark room in my parents' house in the laundry room when I was a kid. Uh, but I had kind of burned out on it. I hadn't even picked up a camera in probably seven, eight years. Wow. And, uh, when I came back and I started, I decided I started wanting to photograph buildings around town. And I just started doing that. And uh, they were terrible photos. You can still see them. I shouldn't even tell you where they're located, but they're still out there online. But uh, no, it was pretty bad. And um, I couldn't really figure out why the pictures I was taking in these buildings didn't look like the pictures you'd see in magazines of these buildings. So I kind of had to reteach myself photography with a digital camera. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes along the way and uh, a lot of trial and error. I uh, learned Photoshop and all self-taught and just kind of went from there. So do you say, uh, is the connection to the mid-century kind of 
connected with your your interest in history or how was how was that born i guess so it's probably all related so it's because i'm not, is anybody who follows me for a while or has seen any of the books that i've done knows that i'm not uh, just interested in the image uh, but also the stories behind these buildings uh, and their history. So um, I, I like to do a lot of my own research and, and tracking buildings down and finding, or if a building catches my eye, I'll go find, fig, do the research afterwards and figure out what the story is about it. Um, and that having training as a historian in school certainly helps with that. Um, but, you know, I don't know that there's a direct correlation really. Yeah, I, that's one thing that's really lovely about your Instagram feed that I really, I really enjoy. Uh, you don't hide stuff from people. Uh, I mean, you may hide stuff in Photoshop, but <laughs> but I just I really, it out. Is all. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I really love the fact that when you post something, you're not you're not there to keep it to yourself. You're there to share it with everybody. You're there to uh, let people experience it in in the way of of being able to find it, you, you generally geo tag everything and you're not worried about someone else getting the shot. You are, you are there to help educate. And, uh, it's been, you know, it's a really great tool, not only, uh, for me to look at your photos and say, well, that's what I want mine to look like, but also, uh, like you said, to, to build my own knowledge and to understand what's, what's going on and how to read, how to redesign a little bit better, and especially in in, term, in terms of the mid-century modern design, uh, and, and and how you've grown from that as well has been uh, fantastic. You you've been able to photograph uh, some of the most beautiful modern buildings as well all around the world, and yeah. that that has to be a really exciting little addition to what you do. Yeah, I never dreamed when I picked up a camera. What, 15 some years ago that it would be where I am today with with that uh, it's it's kind of taken on a life of its own it became more of a hobby it became like a second career uh, and I went from having to sort of sneak around and try to take photos of buildings to being invited by the buildings owners and the, you know and to to, to come in and, and stay there and photograph them and stuff so it's it's gone completely uh, turned on its head which is kind of fun but yeah, as far as sharing and stuff like that, I mean, my main motivation was always just to get people to stop and notice these buildings that they might drive past or walk past every day without noticing or caring and, and hopefully maybe even appreciate them as a result. So that was always my main motivation. And that's why I've always wanted to share and geotag everything I do and, and, and uh, really just try to focus when I do photograph these buildings try to get people to notice it or to, to appreciate them. So photographing them in a way that emphasizes maybe what's left of the original soul or character of the building, because especially with the mid-century stuff, um, there's usually years and years of crap that's been piled on top of them or they've been painted poorly. There's really bad signage. Uh, there's a big dumpster sitting right in front of the, the shot that you want to get or, you know, there's this, or half of the building's been remodeled in a really you know, shitty way. And it's just, so a lot of times it's trying to figure out, well, what's the, what's the perfect angle that I can just show enough of the building to convey what it was like in the originally and, and that where there's still enough of it left with enough character. And, and the same thing even happens with newer buildings. Um, you know, you don't have to deal with the same kinds of things, but most, most houses or buildings that I photograph for architects, there's usually, I mean, the architects usually try to inject a little bit of themselves, some sort of underlying theme in whatever they do. And they, I think that there's a lot of that gets diluted through the course of dealing with the clients and dealing with the city codes and dealing with other requirements and budgets and everything. And so, so much of it gets valued engineered out that I think the, the, architects themselves appreciate when you can kind of identify what, what was that original theme that they had or that idea that they had, that sort of overarching narrative they had about the building and, and figure out which is the, what, are, what are the best angles or what are the best ways to, to tell that story without, I mean, completely disguising it. You still, I still like to keep the building rooted. I don't like to get into abstract photography, 
but so I like I like to, the building to still feel like a building, to still have people, to still you can still see cars or still see you know even trash bins and sometimes and and things like that, so that you don't lose touch with the idea that it's still a functional piece of object, but that you photograph it in such a way that you're still that you're actually capturing that thing that makes it special. You know, what's that one narrative piece? Have you noticed uh, since? since you started your project and I mean, essentially we, we could call this a giant project of yours is, is documenting buildings, especially something that's really interesting uh, that you're really interested in, in a very interesting way. Have you noticed an uptick in interest uh, since you started your project to where you are now? Uh, uh, certainly. I mean, not just an in interest in my work, but um, it's fun to see so many other people doing sort of the same sorts of things that I'm doing. I, I, I don't want to sound like an old man, like, yeah, I was doing this back when no one else cared or whatever. But uh, <laughs> it does feel that way sometimes. And sometimes I think that I, I attribute a lot of the followers that I have on Instagram just to the fact that I've been around longer than most other people uh, doing this sort of thing. Uh, so I've had more time to kind of build that up. Uh, but there are lots of great, photographers and architects and, and just uh, generally other people that are kind of doing the same thing that I'm doing now. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot, a lot more of that. It was a lot easier to stand out when I was really kind of, I felt like I was the only one doing, doing what I'm doing, but now it's no longer the case by any means, but it's still fun. I'm not doing it for that. I'm really just doing it for, for myself. And I'm kind of thrilled that other people care or are interested really. Yeah. And do you notice that, uh, some of these mid-century modern buildings are being saved and, and when, when they are redeveloped, staying more true to the roots? Yeah, I, there was, when I first started doing this in the 90s, it was pretty bad. Uh, there was, um, nobody cared about mid-century modern at all. I mean, everything was, that was kind of my main motivation for starting is because I was seeing all these buildings. When I moved back to San Diego after living in France for a while, I was seeing all of these buildings that I'd kind of grown up with and known about all my life and just sort of taken for granted were all disappearing or being remodeled beyond recognition and turned into like Tuscan strip malls and, you know, McMansions <laughs> were going up instead of these old ranch houses and stuff like that. So I just, when I would start to see a, like a, a, a strip mall or a laundromat or a, you know, a pizza hut or a house getting destroyed, I would just start photographing it just to have some sort of record of it at first. And it kind of evolved beyond that from not just having a record of something to actually wanting to, because what I found was I was really just photographing it and I would show these pictures to people and they were really terrible pictures. And people would say, why are you showing me this picture? It's just a strip mall, or it's just a laundromat. I don't care about that. And I would be like, no, look at it. It's look at the glass, look at how it's angled and look at this crazy overhang. and and they just didn't see it. So I figured the only reason I really improved my photography or decided I had to work on it was because uh, I needed to get people to appreciate the same thing that I was seeing. And, and have people actually come to you uh, for consulting work? Um, not really. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been asked to do lectures mm -hmm. uh, for architects, for universities. I gave a TED talk, as you know. Uh, yep. Uh, I've taken part in, in delegations. Uh, I've talked, I've given talks for uh, uh, architectural historians, Society of Architectural Historians. I've given talks to AIA, things like that. Um, so yes, from that perspective, but I've never been really um, contracted by a developer or somebody or, a, or somebody wants to remodel their house or anything like that. I think there's probably people that are far more qualified than I am to do that anyway. And, and I'm, I mean, I'm not going to say this in a, I'm going to say this in a slighted way. Has anyone asked uh, to see your pictures of what it, what it, what a house originally looked like that, that got just totally demolished? I know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's happened. I mean, after being, you know, doing this for 15 plus years, is I've got built up quite an archive of uh, homes and, you know, shops and, you know, things like that, commercial buildings that no longer exist anymore. So um, I get contacted sometimes by, by uh, like the San Diego Union Tribune, the UTs asked me, or San Diego Magazine or other publications, uh, Dwell, uh, Architectural Record, you know, other have asked me for photos before of buildings that aren't, aren't around anymore. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that happens. And, and, and kind of, Speaking back to what uh, 
what you had just said, uh, you know, you just recently, not well, not too long ago, you, you were on a trip in Saudi Arabia, if I'm correct, correct? Uh, it was the United Arab Emirates. Oh, sorry, excuse me. That, that was a really interesting trip that you ended up taking. What yeah. was it? That was like a group of architects as well as you and... So it was, I did two trips, actually. I went in March and then again in November, I guess, uh, last year. That's uh, right. I'd, I'd never been to the UAE before in my life. Or, but uh, so I, And then all of a sudden in 2019, I went twice. So go figure. <laughs> um, but that was, I thought that was actually, you know, I got a call kind of out of the blue inviting me to take part in a cultural delegation uh, with a group of artists and curators, museum people and, and things like that to... Uh, to go there were, I guess, about a dozen of us or so. And we were invited uh, to be hosts of the UAE government to go over there and visit various museums and cultural institutions um, and spend basically a, a, a week, seven, eight days uh, going around the country, um, visiting these various sites and getting these tours and everything. Um, there was, I was really the only architectural photographer and there was another guy named George Byrne who also photographed architecture, but more of a fine arts uh, photographer uh, and he and I really kind of uh, bonded it was a great group all of them but we stood out in that we really didn't have much to do with the rest of the the art scene uh, so we kind of branched off on our own and we started just taking pictures of a bunch of buildings is what we were looking at including discovering a lot of mid-century stuff in the UAE that I never knew existed I mean everyone talks about the modern buildings in Dubai all the contemporary stuff in Abu Dhabi, but there's a lot, there's a, a really strong uh, mid-century modern heritage of buildings there, which surprised me. So I photographed a bunch of that stuff while I was there and uh, then wrote a blog post and uh, did an article. And um, then I got a call over the summer to, to go back and they said they were gonna lead a, a new delegation that was focused on architecture and uh, asked me if I wanna take part in that one too. So uh, wow. I said, sure. So I, I helped them organize that one a little bit. Uh, and uh, went back in November with a different group and uh, did it all over again. That's unbelievable. I mean, to think about uh, what you're doing as a photographer and not only branching, you know, uh, past architecture and becoming a really important piece in this puzzle of, of documenting historic pieces of architecture, but also coming together and... Uh, bringing cultures together uh we all think that we're that we're so different and to be able to go and and to hold that role that you did to bring that connection especially through pictures and instagram something that we all share uh it's quite powerful to to see the work that's able that you're able to create and and the outcome that you're able to create i've always appreciated that uh, one of the great things about my Instagram account is that it's allowed me to meet people all over the world. I mean, architecture is frankly kind of a universal language, right? We all, mm -hmm. we all need shelter and it, there, there are certain common themes about it regardless of where you are in the world, but it's also, a, uh, a, there's so many regional differences and, and it's fascinating to kind of uh, explore those as well. So it's always been, it's always been great because I travel quite a bit and wherever I go in any city, I, there are always people that reach out to me and invite me over. I've had dinner at people's homes that I didn't even know. Uh, I get invited to come photograph their homes or to stay with them or just to meet them for coffee in, in a strange city. So I, it does feel like I have friends now everywhere I go in just about every city in the world, which is uh, really I, I, probably the, the biggest benefit that I had no idea or couldn't imagine when I started this Instagram account. Yeah, I, I'm sure like nobody could ever imagine something like that. And, no. uh, yeah. and it's, a, it's an amazing connection again, like, like I had said before, that we're able to make and that we're able to finally share with, with mediums such as, such as Instagram. And I know a lot of your stuff started with Flickr even, or, or is it Flickr or is it Flick? It was Flickr, yeah. So okay. I, I, I actually started on a lot of uh, bulletin boards in initially and uh, Shutterfly and Photo Bucket and stuff like that is where I kept all my stuff. And I was just posting to message boards, kind of like Reddit, but it was pre-Reddit. Um, <laughs> and uh, then when Flickr got established, I had an account pretty much right away and uh, 
there was a whole community on Flickr too, because I didn't realize the social media aspect of, of what that was. And when that, that kind of took off. And then when Instagram first came out, I, I just thought actually it was an app for filters. I didn't even realize that there was a social media aspect to it. So I was still on Flickr and I uploaded maybe a dozen or so photos to Instagram and I was playing with filters on them. And then I, I took screenshots and I put them back into Flickr and didn't and, and basically got bored of Instagram and deleted my account from my phone. Didn't even think about it anymore. Uh, I think it was like six months or a year later, I met somebody who said, how come you're not uploading any more photos? You know, you've got all these followers and people, you never respond to anybody's questions in the comments or anything. And I was like, what are you talking about? I didn't even realize I'd posted anything public. So it's a good thing I didn't post anything too racy, I guess, on the Instagram account because that could have been embarrassing. And, 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 now, and now with everything like it is right now, how are you staying fresh? Um, because I'm sure being invited into people's homes and traveling to, to different places is, is a bit difficult. I know it's been a bit difficult for me as a photographer as well, but what, what are you doing to stay fresh? I don't, basically. I'm just sitting around the house board. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, right now is a challenge. I do have a lot of uh, shoots in the pipeline that I'm supposed to be, that I need to do as soon as we're allowed to get out there in the world and, and do our thing again. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm also very concerned about a lot of my friends and clients who are architects and they're really um, struggling right now and they're not really sure. I mean, they went from having all of them to having more work than they knew what to do with to, you know, basically everything just fell off a cliff, right? And nobody really knows what the future is going to lead to. And it's, it's very scary since most architects effectively work for themselves as well uh, or working for current firms that are kind of in a precarious position right now while they weather this. It's, it's uh, you know, it's tough to see and I, I mostly feel for them. So I don't really feel bad for, for myself, especially since I, I do have, you know, plenty of reserves to fall back on and another job and everything else. So I'm not really worried about that, but I am worried for, for everybody else. I mean, relatively speaking, I'm lucky, but in the meantime, uh, I have probably dozens of, uh, projects that in photos, like thousands of photos that I've shot that I've never even had time to go look at. Uh, and so if I ever get the, I, I've had like zero energy or motivation to date, but at some point I'll probably go dig through those archives and, go start and you'll so you'll see a flood of photos on my Instagram of things that I've taken years ago and that I've never even I haven't even looked at I never this will be the first time I've seen them too so I'm not gonna lie I hope there's a couple more of the Johnson Wax building I you know being from Wisconsin I absolutely love that building and then also the the access that you had to that building was kind of unheard of in, in a lot of ways <laughs> I, yeah, I, I definitely got lucky there. That was that's another classic example. I mean, I got a call out of the blue or an email from the Wisconsin Tourism Board uh, inviting me to spend about 10 days up in Wisconsin going on the Frank Lloyd Wright Heritage Trail and photographing all these Frank Lloyd Wright buildings, basically from Racine all the way, just heading west. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was not only were they doing that, but they were coordinating with all of the Taliesin preservation group and uh, everybody else. So I had this unprecedented access and really everybody was just so wonderful and they just rolled out the red carpet and it, it was, it was an amazing experience. So, uh, yeah, the, yeah that you was know, good. they're getting a, they're getting a mean email from me because they still haven't called me yet to do that. <laughs> I told them whatever they do, don't ask Ian to do it. <laughs> And that's respectable. So uh, with, with everything kind of in the pipeline, is there an exciting, uh, is there exciting uh, jobs to come up? You worry, what is your, where are some of the jobs are going to take you in the future right now? Um, yeah, I've got, I have a few things I need to do back in France. Uh, I, I have some stuff in Australia. Um, there's, I mean, honestly, even in San Diego, there's probably a half a dozen things. There's something in, in uh, Caribbean I need to go do, which will be a really tough assignment, a house out there. Um, Exciting. Yeah. Um, there's a museum in Saudi Arabia that's on my list. There's a, yeah, there's a, there's a villa in, in Monaco I need to go shoot. It's really tough stuff. These are hard assignments. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, in beautiful places, but, uh, but never <laughs> are easy, right? Well, it can be stressful. I mean, it's one thing to just, you know, if you notice there's no pressure, but these assignments where you're traveling, honestly, is as fun and glamorous as they sound. It's usually, as I'm sure you know, it's like 16 hours of work a day uh, for several days. Uh, nine times out of 10, Murphy's Law strikes and there's some sort of torrential weather happening, you know, and unheard of downpours or snow or fog or something that you're dealing with. Uh, and so, and, and it's just a very short, narrow window of time that you've got to go do this. So you've got to make it work whatever you do. Um, and so, you know, the, but the clients are always expecting, they see your work on your portfolio and they see these perfect conditions and, you know, great sunny day and blue skies and nice contrast and everything. And then you get there and it's been drizzling for three days and, you know, and then the shots you're going to get are just going to be a little different. But uh, so that's, it can be stressful. But even the worst day of photography is better than, you know, a good day at the office most of the time, right? So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could ever be a, uh, a numbers guy or a pencil pusher in my life. It, you know, it just never aligned for me either. Looking back at your past work, is there something that sticks out for you? Some, is there a building, a project that you shot that just says, wow, I mean, was it, is it like a single day at a, or or just being able to experience one building that just kind of like has a special place in your heart? I've always, there are a few that stick out. Certainly, I think that for me, I, architecture, my love of architecture comes from the experience, from experiencing mm -hmm. these buildings. So I'm forever frustrated trying to document that experience or recreate that experience in a two dimensional medium like photography. I mean, you're just never gonna, it's never gonna work out. <clears throat> but I try my best. But the, the, the buildings, some of the buildings that have really stood out and that, that, I, that I just sort of uh, crave that feeling, those butterflies you get when you walk into a space. Um, certainly, you, you mentioned Johnson Wax, and the interior of that building is, is amazing, the administrative part. Um, the Beinecke Library in Yale is, is one of those. Uh, Kahn's uh, Phillips Exeter Library. Uh, finally getting to see the Farnsworth house, you know, when you come up on it through the woods, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's just a few, I mean, they're in there. Those are very well known. They're, what's, what's almost more interesting is finding ones that you've never heard of before. Um, so there are a few examples like Manitoga, uh, which is the Russell Wright, uh, house up in Hudson Valley, uh, was just a fantastic experience. It's like this glass pavilion. Uh, nestled against a cliff in a quarry with a pond uh, and it's just feels it's almost like a falling water experience but it's it's kind of like a low-key organic more organic version of falling water which is it, it was a nice pleasant surprise to see uh, I, I think I'm that's what keeps me going is I'm constantly looking to recreate to to re-experience those sort of butterflies that's awesome and uh, kind of bringing it back to today um, moving forward with, with what you do and, and the times that we're in right now, do you, I, I know that we all see the change right now in architecture, especially that you had noted a little bit earlier on, uh, on, on how we're all focusing on, on finishing the jobs that have been created and, and taking care of things that are at hand. Right. Um, but do you see any other changes, um, uh, being created in the future as we move forward with this COVID-19? Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's probably going to be, I, I think there are going to be so many changes that we can't even imagine or picture. I mean, when you think about it, in December or January, we never would have imagined where we are today, right? So yeah. it's, it's, it's almost impossible to really project. Um, I'm kind of a, it sounds kind of a fl flip thing to say, but it would be nice to see the the end the demise of the cubicles and the open shared workspaces into you know and dealing with more offices and in and, and more personal workspace would be nice even when you're in offices I, i'd expect to see something like that on a practical level um i think that overall though to to take that up and not just architecture i'm just hoping that this cr restores humanity a bit more uh i mean we're we've just seen increasingly in the past few years, it's sort of become 
not just okay, but almost desirable to become increasingly selfish and mean and, and angry and, and fearful. And I think that when we get through the other side of this, it would be really nice to see, see humanity restored and people start to take care of each other a bit more because uh, this has, I think, caused people to realize that we're all in this together. There's really no escaping this regardless of your political or religious or socioeconomic views or status, you, everybody's, everybody's in this boat at the same time. So I hope that that has a, a long-term positive effect. Wow, that's, that's really some beautiful words. And, and I think that's a great way to end this. Uh, I want to just ask you if you have anything else you want to add to, uh, to end this. And then, uh, of course, everyone can go and click the link up here and, and go to his profile, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have came over from already, but I encourage you to, to follow Darren's work and to re, you know, reach out to him and, and, and really kind of take in the information that, he, that he's sharing with everybody. Um, is there any closing words? And then also just remind everybody where they can find you and, and, and how they can reach you and follow along. Um, well, yeah, reaching me is easy, as you said, in Mod Architecture, and all my contact information is there. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out and, you know, send me messages. I, I try to answer every question, read every comment. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, other than that, though, I just uh, wishing everybody the best in this difficult time and uh, encouraging everybody to stay safe and stay home. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Darren, and uh, have a yeah. great day. Appreciate the opportunity. Take yeah, care. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, everybody, that was another really, really great, exciting interview. And uh, Darren is, is a fantastic person, obviously, as you saw, and just really a guy that's uh, about his work, which is documenting and sharing the story of architecture. So I hope everyone found that informative and interesting. And uh, again, uh, as we end this day, uh, things are looking better day by day, and we got to remember that as, as we go forward. And, uh, you know, stay healthy, continue to do what you're doing to, to make this situation better, and, uh, and, and everybody take care.